Good morning, everyone, and welcome to The Water's Edge. And I'd like to say Happy Easter to all of you. And if you're live with us today, we're so excited for you to be here. And if you're online with us this morning, be sure to check us out on Facebook and YouTube and make sure to like, share, and comment. Also, since we're back live, we're in need of volunteers. So if you volunteered in the past or you want to volunteer now, make sure to email us at watersedgevolunteer at gmail and we'll get you plugged in. We have a full experience for you guys this morning, so sit back, relax, and enjoy worship and a message from Pastor Tony. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise Treasures that fade Were never enough You came along And put me back together Who's the God of the mountain is still God in the valley And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again Nothing. 
Man, what an awesome time of worship with the Water's Edge Band this morning. I really enjoyed all of those songs. Also, if you'd like to partner with us through giving, here's a few ways you can do that. You can visit watersedgegathering.com and download the Water's Edge Gathering app and simply click on Give. Or you can text your dollar amount to 337-223-9003 or you can mail a check to P.O. Box 572, Lake Charles, Louisiana 70602 or 2760 Power Center Parkway, Lake Charles, Louisiana 70607. We absolutely love you guys. Now enjoy the message from Pastor Tony. What's up, everybody? Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning Water's Edge online worship experience. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're joining us online, but we also have opened up our doors. So if you'd like to worship with us in person next week, our doors are back open. But if you're joining with us online, we also want to say Happy Easter. Thank you so much for staying plugged in. We hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful week. Let's pray. Father, today we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for being a real God. We thank you for being alive. We thank you for pursuing us with your grace and with your love. And even though our storms are demanding, God, you always show us your intimacy and your faithfulness. And we thank you for that. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You know, the last 13 months have been historical for so many of us just because we live in southwest Louisiana. And I got to be honest with you, the last year, the last year and a half has made me think a lot about the fine line between solitude and loneliness and isolation and heartbreak. And that actually reminds me of the cross. Check out this passage in John chapter 19, starting in verse 38, and I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, he asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, uh, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jew Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus uh, near a garden where his new tomb was to never be used before. And so because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. After the disciples and the loved ones of Jesus witness his brutal trial and his public execution, he's buried and he's dead and he's gone. And the life that they once knew is now gone. It's now different. It's now been uprooted. They find it at a dead end road. And so the life that they once knew and loved and they were used to and they enjoyed, now it's been disturbed. Now it's been uprooted. Now it's been put on hold. Now it's been invaded by uncontrollable circumstances. Now it's been made to feel heartbreaking. Life is a bit uncertain right now. And that kind of reminds me of our life today. So many people around us are hurting. They've been hurting and they're still hurting. One of my neighbors a couple of months ago finally came back home after his place was fixed after he had evacuated from the hurricanes. And I was looking out the window one day and I was watching him in the middle of the day and it was hot and he was cleaning up all the mess in his yard. And man, it was a mess. It was overwhelming. And at one point, as I looked out the window, I saw him stop working and he just sat down on his front steps on his porch and he just buried his head in his hands and in his arms and he just started weeping. In the middle of the day, I was watching this older man just sit down and he was so overwhelmed from the storms and all the, all the debris and all the aftermath that he just sat down with overwhelming emotion and he just started weeping. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of walked on over and I just patted him on the shoulder and I started crying with him too. I just didn't know what else to do. Even if I don't know you, I, I try to love you. And I believe that love is what really saves the day. And I believe that love always wins. 
Many of us, maybe we haven't had the best experiences with that, but here's to believing that in the end, it always does. So today, very quickly, let's talk about isolation and loneliness and heartache for a minute. How has your life been uprooted? How has your life been disturbed? How has your life been made difficult at the hands of uncontrollable circumstances or the hands of other people? How has your life been made to feel heartbreaking? What storms has been forced on you? What circumstances, what pain, what confusion, what betrayal, what, what hardship, what circumstance has been forced on you? This can all be very overwhelming. This can all be very heartbreaking and isolating and Heartbreak can be one of the most difficult and hardest experiences in life to ever recalculate from. It's never easy to go through, and it's always from an experience of deep, deep meaning. Anytime you have a heartbreaking circumstance or situation in your life, it's always born out of a situation that has deep, deep meaning, and it can fundamentally change you forever. And it can fundamentally change how you see life and how you see your life and how you even look at the world forever or even for a long time at least. Heartbreak forces on us the opportunity to learn lessons, very, very difficult lessons, lessons about life, lessons about trust, lessons about relationships, lessons about love and forgiveness and regret. Heartache can be a heavy time that causes you to recalculate and reevaluate your own self. It causes you to recalculate and reevaluate your patterns and your perceptions and your habits and your future destination and your excuses and your heart. Heartbreak teaches us where we still hold pain around a past wound or hurt or a recent wound or hurt. Heartbreak helps us arrive to a greater understanding of who we are. It helps us arrive at a greater understanding of what we want to be and what we desire and where we seek to be in life and where we seek to be in our faith and in our love. And so never forget about this today. If you're still with me, Sam, still with you. In heartbreak, there is also space for beauty and a greater connection to yourself and a deeper connection to love and to life and to God. When your heart is broken, it's actually an invitation for you to know yourself in a way that you have never known yourself before and a way for you to know God in a way that you have never known him before. Suffering and isolation and heartache is an invitation from God to meet him in the gutter to meet him at your worst point. And that's when he arrives at his best. And it is an invitation for you to get to know who you really are when your heart is broken. In that space, you learn about your forgiveness and God's forgiveness. In that space, you learn about your weaknesses and his strength. In that space, you learn about your capacity to handle the storms of life and God's faithfulness to always walk with you through those storms. In that space, you learn about your personal limits and God's personal intimacy with you to help you get you through the darkest times. At the end of August and then again, in October, my street and your street, my house and your house, my neighborhood and your neighborhood looked completely trashed. Debris everywhere from two major hurricanes, disturbed, a mess, broken, uncomfortable, inconvenienced, not the same as before, damaged. There was one storm and then there was another storm. And has your life and your faith and your relationships ever felt that way? Man, uprooted, a mess, disturbed, debris everywhere, uncomfortable, not the same as before. And so we all begin to rebuild. We all begin to help each other rebuild. And then six months later, while we're all rebuilding, a different type of storm comes through. This one with snow and ice. And so we went from these two storms where we had to pick up the pieces and rebuild to a completely different type of storm that had us too frozen to move, too shaky and too icy to take a step. And so this storm had us trapped. And have you ever felt that way also when a personal storm strikes your life, like you're trapped and I'm too broken to even move. I'm, I'm too broken. It feels like I'm frozen in this life. I'm in limbo. I don't know what to do about this heartache and this pain and these feelings of isolation and loneliness. I felt that way. And I know many of you probably still feel that way right now. But none of our streets look like that anymore. We survived the first storm and the second storm and the third completely different type of storm. Do you know what that means? That in your personal life, you've survived those past storms before. 
heartbreaking storms are going to strike your life and they will continue to strike your life. And if you survive them, then you can survive the next one. If you survive the storms behind you, you can survive the storms ahead of you. When Jesus was crucified, the first disciples felt that way, uncertain, frozen, damaged, devastated, heartbroken. But then notice this, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 7. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who's alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Luke 24, verses 1 through 7. The storm was dark, but they held their ground. And then three days later, they find the borrowed tomb of Jesus empty. He had risen. The storm was over. They held their ground. So now that the storms have cleared, but you still find your heart broken, what do you do? Very quickly, let me give you a few observations. The first thing is this. Understand that until a storm passes in your life, it teaches you about your life. Remember that. Until it passes, it teaches. In fact, say that after me today. Until it passes, it teaches. In the storms, you learn about your limits. In the storms, you learn about your boundaries, your ability to endure. You learn about how important faith in Christ really is and how close God can really draw near to you. So anytime a storm hits, hold your ground and learn those lessons. The second thing is this, when we love God and ourselves properly, then we stop chasing after those things or people that don't love us back properly. Have some respect for yourself. God loves you. You were created in his image. You're better than that depression. You're better than that low self-esteem. You're better than how they've made you feel. You're better than how they've lied to you and about you. You're better than that abuse. You're better than that betrayal. So stop trying to find whatever it is you're looking for and things that are temporary. Find it first in Christ. You were created in his image. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so see yourself how God sees you. You're better than those, how those storms have literally made you feel. The third and last thing is this. Realize that you cannot grow in this life until you've been tested and tried. You can't heal if you don't have pain and wounds. And you cannot deepen your relationship with God and with yourself and with love until you've been tested and tried in this life. There is no story to tell about your life until your life has been tested and tried. Listen, our story is what connects us to ourselves, is what connects us to love and to God and to those other hurting people in our life eventually that need to hear our story about our endurance, about our healing and about our growth. None of this was ever, never meant to be easy. Storms were meant to produce courage and bravery inside of you. Let me say that again. Storms were meant to produce courage and bravery inside of you. They were meant to be demanding. Storms were meant to be demanding because you can't learn and grow until you first get wounded and tested. So what do we do? The last thing is this. Surrender to the lessons and the growth that your trials are teaching you. And as you do that, hold your ground. Because tomorrow, a resurrection is coming and the sun will rise again. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. Happy Easter. We hope you have a wonderful week. Man, what an amazing Easter Sunday message from Pastor Tony. It was so moving. And if you were moved by the message and want to hit us up on social media, make sure to hit us up on Facebook at Water's Edge Gathering and on Instagram at Water's Edge underscore LC. And make sure to hit us up on our Water's Edge app where you can do online giving, you can do online worship, and you can also replay messages from Pastor Tony. We absolutely love you guys. Happy Easter and have a great week.